This is the pen tool tutorial, which you probably already know the keyboard shortcut for the pen tool is P. Um, if you hold command with the pen tool selected, it'll switch over to the arrow tool. If you hold option, it'll switch to the anchor point tool, and I'll go over what that does in a little bit. And this command to switch to the arrow, this works with just about any tool in Illustrator. That's just kind of the fallback. It's, it's pretty nice to just be working in the pen tool and be able to immediately hit command, select an object, and move it, or etc. So, uh, just a nice time saver. Uh, here's some other keyboard shortcuts that you can use with the pen tool. Um, and I will just show them as I'm building a shape. So, how the pen tool works, if you just click and let go of the mouse as you click, it'll create these straight, sharp edges. If you click and drag, then you'll see these handles come out and your line will have a curve. And you can mix, obviously, a sharp and a smooth anchor point for your shapes. You'll need to do that with most shapes you're building. Um, but while you're dragging these handles out to create that curve, there's a few tricks you can use. So as you drag and hold shift, it'll lock the angle to 45 degree increments. So you can build out kind of some smoother curves generally. Some people, when they're doing custom type, they will only use horizontal and vertical anchor points on all of their anchor points unless they absolutely need to use it a different angle for like one single point. Um, and so it's a way to kind of keep your artwork cleaned up. And so you can just hold shift as you create each one of those different angles. And you'll want to wait to hold shift until after you click down. So I'll show you. So if I put an anchor point here, if I hold shift before I click, it keeps the line straight. So it'll place the anchor point exactly, you know, in line with that original one. Whether it's 45, 0, or 90, you know, it keeps it constrained to those angles. But if I click down and then hold shift, it keeps the anchor point where I wanted it, but then it constrains the handles to those angles. Um, so next is options. So I will do a flat um, symmetrical anchor point, I guess, with symmetrical handles. And then I'll go up here. So if I want to go a sharp point, so I'm going to go like this and then hit option, it disconnects the two handles. So it keeps the original handle where it was from my original dragging and it disconnects the next one, and then I can have a sharp point down here, and I can smooth it out down there, so a little mountain peak. Command, I think this was added pretty recently, so depending on your version of Illustrator, but I mean, I think pretty much everyone's on Creative Cloud now, so what you can do is, so as you click and drag, you'll notice this is just, I'm holding Shift right now, and the, the handles have the same length. And they also have the same angle. If I want to, if I hit option, then it's just completely disconnected. If I hit command, then they share the same angle. They're still connected, but I can change the length of one of them. So if you have a really long curve going into a really short curve, that's typically what I'll need that for. And that just saves you a step from having to you know, what I used to have to do is I would just do a, maybe the short curve going into a short curve, and then I'd have to go back and fix that long curve. So now you can just do that in one motion. Uh, but that's the other thing that you can do is, so if you're going and you mess up and you're, you put this curve in and you realize, oh, no, that was supposed to be a short curve, you can, do, you can use that command trick. So I'm not clicking the mouse yet. Pen tool is free. I can hit command and it shows me the arrow, then I can fix that curve. So you can kind of go through and make adjustments as you're going. Typically, I'll wait until I have a full curve done, and then I'll go back and, and fix things. But if there's something that's just really distracting you that you want to fix right now, that's a way to do it. Quick side note, I totally forgot to mention this until the very end of this video, but another huge thing with the, with the pen tool is when you click, if you missed where you wanted that anchor point, before you let go of the mouse, 
you can just press and hold spacebar and it'll reposition that anchor point. So anywhere along your curve, you can lay down an anchor point, hold spacebar before you let go of the mouse, move the anchor point, and then when you let go of the spacebar, you can still adjust the angle and hold option and do all the other stuff. So I'm going to show the anchor point tool, like I said. So you can, you can use this either by hitting P and then holding option, or what I do is shift C. I know at one point this was a default keyboard shortcut and I can't remember if they removed it or maybe removed it and replaced it. If you would like to use this keyboard shortcut and it is not the default option, just hit Command Option Shift K to pull up your keyboard shortcuts. Uh, and then Tools, just type in Anchor Point and just select it here and hit Shift C and it'll add that and you'll have to save those shortcuts if you don't already have it added. So anyway, Anchor Point Tool. So I have standard circle for anchor points. So if you just click on an anchor point with the Anchor Point Tool, it'll convert it to a corner which means that there are no handles. So we have a smooth anchor point with handles on each side and a corner with no anchor point or with no handles. So if I have a corner and I want it to be smooth, then I can use the anchor point tool and I can click and drag. And then it works just like the, the pen tool um, that both handles are symmetrical and connected. Length and angle is the same. You can hold shift to constrain that angle you can't hold option or command to, to kind of semi disconnect or just disconnect those, but you can set your new handles. And then if you click a, uh, on a single handle with the anchor point tool, it'll disconnect it. This also works if you select a point and go to drag it with the direct select tool, they'll stay connected by angle, but not by length. If you hold option, then it'll disconnect it completely. So you can get your corners after you set them with the pen tool. That's one way to go back and edit. Um, and then I'll show you, uh, when you select an anchor point, you'll see, so you have your selection type or object type. Um, you can convert an anchor point to a corner. Same thing as if you just click on it with the anchor point tool. Except that doesn't want to do it. Weird, usually that works, but I would just use the anchor point tool if you want that. Um, what does work is you can convert it to smooth and then it'll lock those handles back together. So what it's doing is it took the average of this angle and this angle and it just set both of them to that, that average angle. So you may need to go back and fix the angle sometimes if you're, if you're using that. Uh, but that's a nice way if you, you know, sometimes you will disconnect the handles and then realize later as you're fixing and tweaking your artwork that you actually did want those handles connected and maybe you just can't quite get them right and exactly the same. You can convert them to smooth and if you have to tweak them, you can, but now they're back connected so it'll be easier to edit again. Uh, if you want to split a point, you can use this scissors uh, scissors tool up top and now you will have two points that are uh, in the same position I guess so you need to drag one off um, or what you can do is if you hit C then that will give you the scissor tool and then you can click on it on an anchor point and that'll do the same thing it'll split it and if you use the scissor tool and click anywhere on the path it'll split that path in that point you can Kind of skip a step that you don't have to select and then hit the tool up top. That can maybe save some time. I use it quite a bit, but you know, just personal preference. So uh, if you're not completely bored of this tutorial by now, I'm going to just show the pen tool in action a little bit and trace this shoe by Cheddar Snap, this photo he took. Um, and I wanted to show a little bit of my specific process when I'm tracing images. I have found to work the best is I will create a new layer and I'll just name this reference and then I'm going to select my I have this photo group so it's got the username and it's got the photo I'm going to drag it onto the reference layer and then so I 
Right now, it's the only object on the layer, so I have all of the objects of the layer selected, but what you can actually do is if you click this circle, that selects the layer itself. So I'm gonna select the layer itself, I'm gonna switch the blend mode to multiply, and I'm gonna lower the opacity. I usually do about 75%. This is kind of a dark photo, so you could maybe go even a little bit lighter than that. But what that does, the reason why I said select the layer and not just change this photo to be lighter, is if I take, I'll take this little pen tool graphic. So I'm gonna move that over here. So it's, it's on the lower layer. If I select that and move it onto this upper layer, it'll fade out and it'll have the multiply blending mode applied to it also. I can show you that, I'll just show you that here. So it's multiplied and it's, it's faded and it, it did that automatically because I changed, I said everything on this layer I want to be multiplied and 65% opacity. So that saves me uh, some time if I'm dragging in multiple reference images uh, one by one. If I, once I have the layer set up, it's just a quick drag and drop onto that layer. And then I will lock that layer. And then I'll draw on the layer beneath it. And the reason I like to do it this way is um, I'll usually pick a bright color and then I can do a white fill. And as I start drawing, you can kind of see the fill showing up here. So just to show you what this shape kind of looks like and then I can do you know, the sole coming over it. So because I have the image on the layer above, I can still see my whole reference image. If it's on the layer below and I'm using a fill, then I can't see the image. So what you're gonna wanna do if you did that is get rid of the fills so you can still see the image below, but then you get these weird overlapping shapes. So I put the reference image on top multiplied and then draw underneath it and I can use a fill to hide. It's, it's more accurate to how I'm actually trying to draw it, that I am not seeing all of these hidden strokes that I'll, I'd have to just go back and hide eventually. But anyway, sorry, that was pretty long winded. I'm just gonna get to it. So how I'm going to do, how I'm gonna draw this shoe is I'm going to trace the upper and then I'm gonna trace the sole separately. And then we can use those, uh, we can do separate colors and It'd be a little easier to edit the artwork. This is this is basically what I were doing if I were if I worked for Adidas and I was creating a a render of this shoe, and then I would um, you know use that to actually design and choose colors and patterns and things like that. So anyway, so now so I'm I'm getting to this spot where I want a curve going into. A, a different angle with a curve. So I'm holding option, it disconnects those handles. And actually I'm gonna change the color of this layer so you can see a little bit better. We'll do, let's see how green looks. Yeah, that looks better. Okay, so draw that curve up. So that's just a normal, normal handles, but I'll kind of try and match the angle of this tag. Now this one, I am going to, I'm not gonna drag from the point Initially, I'm gonna hold Option, so I'm only pulling out one handle, if that made any sense. So here I've got a long handle, I'll hold Option for a short handle and change the angle a little bit so you get a little bit of that corner. Same thing, I'm gonna drag my initial handle, hold Option. And if you haven't used the pen tool a lot, then even tracing images can be kind of frustrating maybe. You, you'll have to go through a lot of trial and error until you get comfortable kind of recognizing where on the shoe or you know whatever image you're, you're drawing. It, it takes a while to recognize how far you can go without placing a point. So I mean, I put a point here and a point over here. I knew that I could make the curve go all the way around that lace. 
Um, there's more detail kind of towards these corners, so I need a point closer to the corner. That's just something that will come with more practice with the pen tool and and uh, getting comfortable using those handles. So just don't get discouraged with you know the frustrations that can come with the pen tool. So I got the upper traced, so I'm just gonna really go rough around the sole because like I said, I'm gonna trace the sole separately. So that's all gonna be hidden. So now I can start over here. So now I'm gonna go back and just edit. I'm gonna pull this handle a little bit longer so that curve is a little more dramatic. Um, and then I can just carry on because using the, the uh, arrow on a handle doesn't break your current path. So you can make adjustments like that and then just continue on where you were. So I hope I'm not going too fast. I hope you can kind of see what I'm doing when I pull a handle out and hold option and pull it up. And again, that's just something that comes with practice. Um, it might be kind of awkward to, to be using keyboard shortcuts while you're focusing on these handles, but as you get more comfortable with it and just kind of practice using those little shortcuts, the option and command and shift if you need to keep it to 90 degrees. Okay, so same thing, I'm, I'm to the end of the white sole. I can go add in another sole there if I want. Um, I'm gonna follow the bottom of this white sole though, because I don't think I wanna have another layer on the bottom here. I'm not going for accuracy necessarily. If you're building this for, like I said, if it's like a product render that you're gonna actually use to design, then I would say accuracy is a lot more important there because you wanna see if the sole is bright red, then how much of that bright red are you gonna see from this angle? And for this, I'm not too worried about that. I'm more worried about everyone falling asleep right now. but we're almost to the end. So actually this would be a good spot to go long handle and then I hold command and I'm gonna shorten the handle but I want the angle to still be connected. So, and sometimes if you go too short on this handle I might not be able to get that angle exactly where I want it. So that's pretty close but I'm gonna just show if I were to do this and couldn't match that angle I'd let go and then I'd hold command, fix the angle, and then I can just carry on and, and know that I got the right angle on those anchor points and they're still connected. So that makes me feel good. Okay, so I have the upper traced and I have the lower sole. Um, yeah, I'll just go. Oh yeah, and I don't know if I said this, when you drop an anchor point with the pen tool, you can hold space bar and then you can adjust the position of that. And it's not just the first one, that's any anchor point. You draw the handles, you can still hit space bar and adjust the position. So I'll we'll just finish off this outsole. Oh, and I didn't hold option when I started this, so now I have to go back and hold option with the direct select tool, disconnect those handles, and that should be fixed. So now you can hide your reference layer and see what you're working with, and that looks pretty good, I would say. Um, so now I'll just, I'm gonna get rid of the strokes and switch the fill there. I'm gonna lighten that up. Same thing, I'll switch them, get rid of the stroke, uh, change the color a little bit. And then I'm gonna take this color and just go a little darker with it. And there you go, so that's the pen tool. I know that was a little long-winded. Uh, if you still have any questions after that, then please just let me know in the comments and I'll try and uh, cover it. So that's it, thanks for watching, you guys.